This is brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. Celestial mechanics is the branch of astronomy that deals with the motions of objects in outer space. Historically, celestial mechanics applies principles of physics, classical mechanics, to astronomical objects, such as stars and planets, to produce ephemeris data. History. Modern analytic celestial mechanics started with Isaac Newton's Principia of 1687. The name celestial mechanics is more recent than that. Newton wrote that the field should be called rational mechanics. The term dynamics came in a little later with Gottfried Leibniz, and over a century after Newton, Pierre Simon Laplace introduced the term celestial mechanics. Before Kepler, there was little connection between the exact, quantitative prediction of planetary positions, using geometrical or arithmetical techniques, and contemporary discussions of the physical causes of the planet's motion. Johannes Kepler for detailed treatments of how his laws of planetary motion can be used, see Kepler's laws of planetary motion and Keplerian problem. Johannes Kepler, 1571 to 1630, was the first to closely integrate the predictive geometrical astronomy, which had been dominant from Ptolemy in the 2nd century to Copernicus, with physical concepts to produce a new astronomy, based upon causes, or celestial physics in 1609. His work led to the modern laws of planetary orbits, which he developed using his physical principles and the planetary observations made by Tycho Agrab. Kepler's model greatly improved the accuracy of predictions of planetary motion, years before Isaac Newton developed his law of gravitation in 1686. Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, December 25, 1642 to March 31, 1727, is credited with introducing the idea that the motion of objects in the heavens, such as planets, the sun, and the moon, and the motion of objects on the ground, like cannonballs and falling apples, could be described by the same set of physical laws. In this sense, he unified celestial and terrestrial dynamics. Using Newton's law of universal gravitation, proving Kepler's laws for the case of a circular orbit is simple. Elliptical orbits involve more complex calculations, which Newton included in his Principia. Joseph Louis Lagrange After Newton, Lagrange, January 25, 1736 to April 10, 1813, attempted to solve the three-body problem, analyzed the stability of planetary orbits, and discovered the existence of the Lagrangian points. Lagrange also reformulated the principles of classical mechanics, emphasizing energy more than force, and developing a method to use a single polar coordinate equation to describe any orbit, even those that are parabolic and hyperbolic. This is useful for calculating the behavior of planets and comets and such. More recently, it has also become useful to calculate spacecraft trajectories. Simon Newcomb Simon Newcomb, March 12, 1835 to July 11, 1909, was a Canadian-American astronomer who revised Peter Andreas Hansen's table of lunar positions. In 1877, 
Assisted by George William Hill, he recalculated all the major astronomical constants. After 1884, he conceived with A.M. W. Downing a plan to resolve much international confusion on the subject. By the time he attended a standardization conference in Paris, France in May 1886, the international consensus was that all ephemerides should be based on Newcomb's calculations. A further conference as late as 1950 confirmed Newcomb's constants as the international standard. Albert Einstein. Albert, Albert Einstein, March 14, 1879 to April 18, 1955, explained the anomalous precession of Mercury's perihelion in his 1916 paper The Foundation of the General Theory of Relativity. This led astronomers to recognize that Newtonian mechanics did not provide the highest accuracy. Binary pulsars have been observed, the first in 1974, whose orbits not only require the use of general relativity for their explanation, but whose evolution proves the existence of gravitational radiation, a discovery that led to the 1993 Nobel Physics Prize. Examples of problems. Celestial motion, without additional forces such as thrust of a rocket, is governed by the gravitational acceleration of masses due to other masses. Simplification is an n-body problem, where the problem assumes some number n of spherically symmetric masses. In that case, the integration of the accelerations can be well approximated by relatively simple summations. Examples For body problem, spaceflight to Mars. For parts of the flight the influence of one or two bodies is very small, so that there we have a two or three body problem. See also the patched conic approximation. Three body problem, quasi-satellite spaceflight to, and stay at a Lagrangian point. In the case that n equals 2, two-body problem, the situation is much simpler than for larger n, various explicit formulas apply, wherein the more general case typically only numerical solutions are possible. It is a useful simplification that is often approximately valid. Examples A binary star example, Alpha Centauri, approximate the same mass. A binary asteroid, example, 90 Antiope, approximate the same mass. A further simplification is based on the standard assumptions in astrodynamics, which include that one body, the orbiting body, is much smaller than the other, the central body. This is also often approximately valid. Examples, solar system orbiting the center of the Milky Way, a planet orbiting the sun, a moon or orbiting a planet, a spacecraft orbiting Earth, a moon, or a planet. In the latter cases, the approximation only applies after arrival at that orbit. Perturbation theory. The perturbation theory comprises mathematical methods that are used to find an approximate solution to a problem that cannot be solved exactly. It is closely related to methods used in numerical analysis, which are ancient. The earliest use of modern perturbation theory was to deal with the otherwise unsolvable mathematical problems of celestial mechanics. Newton's solution for the orbit of the moon, which moves noticeably differently from a simple Keplerian ellipse because of the competing gravitation of the Earth and the Sun. Perturbation methods start with a simplified form of the original problem, which is carefully chosen to be exactly solvable. In celestial mechanics, this is usually a Keplerian ellipse, which is correct when there are only two gravitating bodies, say, the Earth and the Moon, or a circular orbit, which is only correct in special cases of two-body motion, but is often close enough for practical use. The solved, but the simplified problem is then perturbed to make its time rate of change equations for the object's position closer to the values. From the real problem, such as including the gravitational attraction of a third, more distant body, the Sun. The slight changes that result from the terms in the equations, which themselves may have been simplified yet again, are used as corrections to the original solution. Because simplifications are made at every step, the corrections are never perfect, but even one cycle of corrections often provides a remarkably better approximate solution to the real problem. There is no requirement to stop at only one cycle of corrections. A partially corrected solution can be reused as the new starting point for yet another cycle of perturbations and corrections. In principle, for most problems, the recycling and refining of prior solutions to obtain a new generation of better solutions could continue indefinitely, to any desired finite degree of accuracy. 
The common difficulty with the method is that the corrections usually progressively make the new solutions very much more complicated. So each cycle is much more difficult to manage than the previous cycle of corrections. Newton is reported to have said, regarding the problem of the moon's orbit it causeth my head to ache. This general procedure, starting with a simplified problem and gradually adding corrections that make the starting point of the corrected problem closer to the real situation, is a widely used mathematical tool in advanced sciences and engineering. It is the natural extension of the guess, check, and fix method used anciently with numbers. Notes Cropper, William H., 2004, Great Physicists, The Life and Times of Leading Physicists from Galileo to Hawking. Oxford University Press, P. 34, ISBN 978-0-19-517324-6. by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.